Hello, welcome to Stuff and Futurity Tube. If you are excited to learn more about sourdough baking and how to make your own bread at home, but aren't quite sure how to start, or are even confused from all the videos online, I wanna tell you in detail about this healthy bread and I gonna show you a foolproof way to start making an amazing and tasty sourdough bread. Many people consider it to be tastier and healthier than conventional bread. Some even say that it's easier to digest and less likely to spike your blood sugar. Sourdough is one in all the oldest sorts of grain fermentation. Sourdough bread rises without the need for commercial yeast. Its fermentation relies on wild yeast and carboxylic acid bacteria that are naturally present in flour to leaven the bread. Wild yeast is more immune to acidic conditions than commercial yeast. This can be what allows it to figure along with lactic acid producing bacteria to assist the dough rise. While wild yeast is unquestionably the star of the show, it isn't really what makes bread sour. This distinctive sour flavor comes from two kinds of friendly bacteria, lactobacillus and acidobacillus, that grow alongside wild yeast in sourdough culture and help ferment the sugars within the dough. Why Sourdough Bread is One of the Healthiest Breads Sourdough bread contains higher levels of folate and more antioxidants than other types of bread. The lower levels of phytate in it make the body absorb the nutrients easier. Sourdough bread contains carbohydrates, fiber, protein, fat, selenium, folate, thiamine, sodium, manganese, niacin and iron. Sourdough bread contains less gluten, which makes it easier to digest for people with a gluten sensitivity. Also, its probiotic properties and the similar probiotic properties which found in it, may enhance the digestive process. Sourdough fermentation produces changes in the bread which allow for better blood sugar control and an improvement in sensitivity of insulin. Before you make a sourdough bread, you had to make an active sourdough starter. If you mix milled grain, such as wheat, and water, the community of living things that colonize the resulting concoction is almost composed of a small handful of organisms that are able to leaven bread and yielding a sourdough starter. It's having mellow, or fully developed, that ensures a good starter and good flavor in your sourdough bread. How to make a sourdough starter You can always buy an excellent old sourdough starter on eBay, but if you've got a touch little bit of patience, there's nothing more satisfying than growing your own sourdough starter from scratch. All you need is from 5 to 7 days, depending on the temperature in your home. It's simply just a mix of some flour and some water. That's it. So, you have to get 50 grams of flour and to that you are adding 50 ml of water, stir it together. Then you're going to leave that to sit out in your kitchen, just gently covered. Let it ferment at room temperature overnight. For the next few days, feeding it daily and growing more and more yeast culture. Basically, you're cultivating your own yeast. So at the moment, you're surrounded by wild yeast. It's a good strain of bacteria, it exists everywhere. Wild yeast can be found almost everywhere. It's in your flour and even in the air you breathe every day. Now what you need to do is just trap this wild yeast and grow it by fermenting it in a container. And that is simply it. And then basically, over a process, once you let the flour and water mixture sit, it eventually picks up the bacteria in the air. And that bacteria starts to ferment. It starts to live off the protein within the flour. Wild yeast will eat away at the starches and sugars in the flour. So, in turn, making the yeast multiply and create gases, so it starts to rise and collapse. Look! Making a sourdough starter is quite simple. The only thing, that you simply must remember, is that you just have to feed it. Just like a baby, or as some call it the monster and you will be able to know it is ready to be used for bread making when the culture becomes very volatile and emits a sour but fresh scent. Here is exactly what you're looking for to know making a bubbling and delicious sourdough starter. Look at the ingredients and the supplies and listen to my notes. 1. If your tap water is being high in chlorine, you may need to fill a vessel and let it sit uncovered overnight to release the chlorine before using to mix a starter. Alternately, you can use filtered water. Also, your environment is much colder, you should keep your starter between 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, that you might want to start with warmer water. 2. After the initial mix, you need to feed your starter flour, 
just make sure it is a strong red flower and look for a white flower that has a protein level of at least 11 to 12 percent for best results to create a nice sturdy loaf. 3. To make sure you don't bring unwanted mold or bacteria into your starter, sterilize your jar by running it through a hot dishwasher wash cycle, or boil canning jars for 10 minutes. 4. A kitchen scale is recommended if you plan to keep up your sourdough starter for a long time, it can make the feedings easier, less messy and faster. The first day is initial mix. Add 50 grams whole wheat or rye flour into a very clean one quart jar or a glass container along with 50 in a less warm tap or filtered water between 65 to 80 degrees F. And heat mix and stir well until all the flour is moistened and the dough resembles a thick paste. Cover loosely with the lid or plastic wrap. Set out at warm room temperature for 24 hours. Above the fridge works well. The second day of the process is first feeding. You will not may notice much of a difference in the starter appearance after the first 24 hours aside from some condensation and a wheat-like aroma. You will need to begin feeding it to encourage growth. Feed your starter 50 grams flour and 50 grams water. This means, adding in a fresh 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of water and mixing it really well with yesterday's mix. So at this stage, you would be due to mix this to 50 grams of all-purpose flour or bread flour and another 50 grams of warm tap or filtered water between 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit to a stainless steel or glass bowl. Stir it together to combine all ingredients, ensuring all the flour has been incorporated and the starter is well mixed. And that's it. Return the starter to the jar. Cover again loosely with the lid or plastic wrap. Again, let it sit at warm room temperature from 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit for another 24 hours. From the third day to the fifth day of the process is to check the starter and feed twice a day. On the third day, you would notice some activity in your starter. The mixture should start to look lovely and bubbling and it will may have risen some. It will have a fresh, slightly tangy aroma. And this is the sign of life starting to form. Now you need to feed the starter twice a day. It's best to arrange the days to conveniently work together with your schedule. Keep them as evenly spaced apart as possible, the goal is every 12 hours. To feed the starter, give it a couple of well stirs to release bubbles. Now, pour 50 grams of the starter and place it into a stainless steel or glass bowl, feed it 50 grams all-purpose flour or white flour and 50 grams warm tap or filtered water at 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. A ratio of 1 to 1 to 1. Mix it well. Discard the rest. Stir well to mix the ingredients, ensuring all the dry flour has been incorporated and the starter is mixed well. Tip this freshly fed starter into a clean jar and use a rubber band to mark where the starter comes up to. Cover loosely with the lid or plastic wrap. Again, let it sit at warm room temperature, 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Repeat this 12 hours later and every 12 hours for the next two days. By the fourth and the fifth days of the process, of checking and feeding, you should have an active, lovely and bubbling culture. Then, you can already notice the activity in your starter will vary between feedings over the next two days. On the fourth day you can see it looks bubbly and sometimes foamy before each feeding. You can see all these little bubbles coming lovely and active and vinegary kind of smell. But don't worry. This is exactly what we're looking for. It's starting to ferment. By the fifth day, it will have nearly doubled in size before you feed it. The aroma should be pleasantly sour and slightly yeasty. Again, the process of feeding, pour 50 grams of the starter into a bowl and feed it 50 grams flour and 50 grams water, a ratio of 1 to 1 to 1. Mix it well. Discard the rest. Tip this freshly fed starter into a clean jar and use a rubber band to mark where the starter comes up to. By the fifth or sixth days your sourdough starter should be strong enough to use in your first loaf of bread. Check the signs. 1. The starter should be nearly doubling in volume between feedings and look very bubbly and slightly foamy at the surface. 2. It should even have a strong, but pleasant acidic aroma. Now, that means you are ready to bake bread. But, if your starter is splitting and forming liquid on the top or the bottom, just put it straight back and give this another day. Feed it again, one more time. Check that the environment in which you are keeping your starter isn't too warm. No worries if you may not notice the starter is quite runny when it's time to feed it again. This is due to the acid created by the bacteria. Don't be afraid to give it an extra day. Because it will differ, depending on the environment it was kept in. So, 
If it needs an extra day, just give it an extra day. Now, before start making your homemade sourdough breads, I wanna tell you that it is essential to weigh all ingredients when making sourdough bread. This is more accurate, and also easier. When you weigh, all you have to do is empty the ingredients into the bowl and watch the scale. Look at the ingredients of the starter and the sourdough here, and what are the necessary supplies. Are you ready? Let's start! Start using this recipe as a starting point. Use all-purpose flour, and you can also use some whole wheat flour or other whole grain flour. You can also add things like nuts, dried fruits, or oats. Now, in order to make your sourdough bread, you have to get your sourdough starter as above. As I say, it takes about a week. Get it going today, and you'll be ready by next weekend. Ensure that the sourdough culture is active. If the sourdough starter is in the refrigerator, take it out two to three days before you plan to bake. Feed it daily to make sure it is strong and very active before you make the bread. Test that the sourdough starter is ready. Generally, if the surface of the starter is very bubbly, it is ready to use. You can test that it is ready by dropping a teaspoon of yeast into a cup of water. If the starter floats, then it is ready. Now, if everything of the starter going well, let's go. Perfect. Salt is an essential ingredient. Salt acts as a natural flavor enhancer. Now salt melting. Put 50 grams of water in salt for the dough into a small bowl. Set aside, stirring occasionally, to make sure the salt dissolves. Now you need to mix the starter and the water, you just need a little bit of your sourdough starter. So use 320 grams. Just make sure you don't use it all. Add the remaining of water for the dough to the bowl of the starter. Stir with a spoon or use your hands to loosen and dissolve the starter in the water. It's okay if the sourdough starter does not dissolve completely and few lumps remain. So, with this starter, you're going to make enough for two loaves. Now, you've got your sourdough starter and water mixture, place it in a large bowl, and then get your flour, add flour and the remaining water and stir with a rubber spatula until there are no more dry spots. Here it forms a very disheveled dough. After mixing the sourdough starter with the remaining flour and water, cover the bowl with a plastic wrap or a clean kitchen towel. Let the dough rest for at least 30 minutes or for up to 4 hours. This is the spontaneous hydrolysis stage as the flour completely absorbs the water, which helps the formation of gluten during the next stage. The enzymes in the flour begin to break down the starches into simpler sugar, which becomes food for yeast and bacteria in the starter, and makes the bread more flavorful. Pour the melted salt onto the dough. Knead the dough with water and salt and squeeze the dough. At this stage, the dough is wet and loosened. Salt is essential for delicious bread. Making dough by folding method is better for developing gluten into the dough, rather than kneading in a mixer or by hand. Whereas, folding the dough gives the final bread crumbs a better structure and holes. Folding the dough is being by grabbing some dough from the side, stretching it upwards, and then folding it over the dough. Doing this several times around the bowl, then leaving the dough in place for 30 minutes before doing it again. After a few rounds of this, the dough will be going from shaggy and grassy to smooth and stretchy. Begin folding the dough, two and a half hours. Hold the dough on one side, lift it up, and fold it over it. Fold the dough four times, and turn it clockwise from the top of the bowl, or give the bowl a quarter turn between the folds. Let the dough rest for 30 minutes, then repeat. Do this six times, every half hour, for a total of two and a half hours. The dough will start out very loose, but will get tighter as you continue folding. This is the dough in the middle way through the folding stage. This is the dough at the folding end. Let the dough rise undisturbed. Once the folds are done, cover the dough and let it rise undisturbed for 30 to 60 minutes, until it looks a little swollen. This dough will not double in size in the usual way, unleavened bread, it should look bigger than it did when it started. Once the dough roughly comes ready just dump straight out on the table, sprinkle some flour on the surface, use a dough scraper to divide the dough in half. Form the dough into loose rounds. Sprinkle a little flour over each piece of dough. Use a dough scraper to shape each one into loose rounds, 
This is not the final shape, just an initial shaping to prepare the dough for further shaping. Make it into a ball by sliding a dough scraper under the edge of dough and then scraping it around the curve of the dough, like turning left when driving. Do this multiple times to build up the surface tension in the dough. Sprinkle some flour on the dough scraper as needed to prevent it from sticking to the dough. Continue rotating the dough to build up the surface tension. In the end, you should have a soft round of dough. Once both doughs are formed, let them rest for 20 to 30 minutes to loosen the gluten again before final shaping. Sprinkle the flour on the top of one of the dough balls. Turn it over with a dough scraper so that the flour side is against the plank and on top is the sticky surface that has not been scattered with flour. Shape the loaf exactly as you folded the dough beforehand, hold the lip of the dough from the bottom, and gently pull it up. Then fold it over the center of the dough. Repeat with the left and right side of the dough. Repeat with the top of the dough. Once folded down, use your thumb to grab the bottom lip again and roll the dough gently to the right. Use your thumb to grab the bottom lip again and roll the dough gently on the right side up. If it is not completely round or looks tight to you, hold your palm around the dough and rotate it on the counter to shape it. Repeat with the second dough. Then for shaping your breads, it's better to use proving baskets. Because it's going to be proving for another 3 or 4 hours, it would just slowly start to prove out, and go very, very flat. So by using the basket, it gives the dough support and shape during their final rise before baking. It encourages it to take on that shape, so instead of proving out, it proves up. But if you don't have a basket, you can simply use a colander or mixing bowl. Either way, prepare two baskets or bowls, tie them to a clean towel, and sprinkle the flour generously over them. Use your fingers to rub the flour into the rag, this prevents the dough from sticking. Baskets don't need much maintenance. After you are done baking, grind any loose flour, let it dry on the counter, then store it in a cupboard. If you bake fairly frequently, you don't need to wash the dish towel, in fact, leaving the flour on will help prevent the dough from sticking. Watch for mold, and allow towels and baskets to dry completely before storing again. And now you have a perfect little loaf ready to go. Pop it into your basket with a towel upside down. And just so it doesn't stick, we just tucked our dough in and we're going to let it prove again. Cover the baskets loosely with a lid, or place them inside clean plastic bags. Let it to prove at room temperature for about another 3 to 4 hours. The great thing about this though is, at this stage, alternatively, you could go and put this straight in the fridge, and it can sit there all night long, no problem whatsoever. Because, with our sourdough, it's moving lovely and slowly. Sourdough really loans itself to be proven overnight. So leave it there all night. If it rises overnight, bake loaves straight from the refrigerator. There is no need to warm up before baking. Take your dough out, turn it straight out and into your oven. Preheat oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, place heavy bottomed pots with covers in the oven and preheat to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Carefully remove one of the heated pots from the oven and remove the cover. Slide the loaf into the pot. Seam side down. Use a sharp or serrated knife to cut the surface of the loaf. Repeat with the second loaf. If there is some dough left in the liner of the proofing basket, try to gently loosen it or knock it away with your fingers. Cover loaves bake for 20 minutes. Lower the oven temperature to 450 degrees Fahrenheit and bake another 10 minutes. Remove the covers to release the remaining steam and continue baking for 15-25 minutes. At this point, the loaves should have a dry surface and are just starting to show a golden color. Continue baking until the crust is dark brown, until these loaves are completely baked for the flavor and texture of the crust. When done, remove the loaves from the utensils with a spoon. Carry them to wire racks still cool completely. Wait until it cools to room temperature before chopping. Bread can be stored at room temperature in a paper bag for up to 3 days, or in a plastic wrap and frozen for up to 2 months. For frequent baking, if you're baking along with your starter over once per week, keep it at cool temperature, 65 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and feed it once every day as instructed above. For home bakers, if you might only bake once a week or less, or at weekends when you've a bit more time, you shouldn't feed it every day. So what you can simply do is keep yours in the fridge to slow the starter's growth. Because it's based on bacteria, cold won't kill it. It'll just slow it down. Take it out of your fridge on the night before planning to make the dough. Leave it sit in your kitchen to take the chill off it. 
For example, if the weight you have is 200 grams, then stir in 200 flour and 200 water, leave it sit in your kitchen. Next morning it's going to be lovely, bubbly and active, ready to make your bread. Take what you need to make your bread, whatever is left over, back in your fridge, that's it. So you have a little once a week cycle. You find it gets better with age, the flavor starts to develop. So even if you're not baking, you still have to feed it, because technically it is alive. Generally, whatever weight you have here, you need to add same weight of flour, same weight of water. A refrigerated starter should smell pleasant and sour and you'll see some bubbles on the surface. You must not see watery liquid on the surface or smell alcohol. If you are doing sea liquid, try feeding it more frequently. With time, you will get to understand your starter and therefore the environments and temperatures during which it'll thrive best. Now you're ready to make your own sourdough bread. This is a long video but this is something just need to be explained in detail, so if you watch this video and learn something plaza like it and subscribe.